Hi, I'm Kelly. I'm 35 years old and love to keep things neat and organized. I work as an auditor at a big company. My friends often tease me about how I always keep receipts and pay my taxes on time, but I believe these small habits help me stay in control of my life. Let me tell you how I met my husband Brian. We met at a party hosted by our mutual friend Julie. I remember that evening well. I was drinking a glass of wine and chatting with some old college friends when Brian walked in. He was a bit older, with a confident walk and a charming smile. He worked as a manager at a food sales company. Hey, I'm Brian. Mind if I join you? He asked, holding a beer and looking directly at me. Sure, I'm Kelly. Nice to meet you, I replied with a smile. We started talking, and I was surprised by how easy it was to chat with him. We discovered that we both loved hiking and had a shared passion for classic rock music. A few months into our relationship, Brian invited me to his sister Lauren's barbecue. It was my first time meeting his family, and I was a bit nervous. When we arrived, Lauren greeted us warmly, but her five kids were a different story. They were running around, screaming, and throwing toys everywhere. Hey Lauren, this is Kelly, Brian said, introducing me. Nice to meet you, Kelly. These are my little rascals, Paul, James, and Helen. Lauren said, barely holding on to James, who was trying to squirm out of her grasp. Nice to meet you all, I replied, trying to hide my discomfort. As the evening went on, the kids got wilder. They were climbing on furniture, throwing food, and yelling at the top of their lungs. I looked at Brian, hoping he would say something, but he just smiled and shrugged. Aren't they just full of energy, he said with a chuckle. I forced a smile and said, yeah, they sure are. As Brian and I got closer, we started talking about our future together. He proposed to me during a hike on top of a beautiful hill overlooking the valley. It was simple and sweet, just the way I liked it. Our wedding was lovely, except for one little problem Lauren's kids. They were running around, making a mess, and being loud. Lauren didn't seem to mind, and Brian thought it was funny. Look at them, they're having so much fun, Brian said, laughing as he watched them spill drinks and toss food around. Yeah, but they're also making a huge mess, I replied, trying to keep calm. Oh, come on, ma'am, they're just kids. Let them enjoy, he said, shrugging it off. I didn't want to spoil our special day by arguing, so I let it go, hoping things would get better once we settled into our new life together. After we got married, Brian and I decided to buy a house. We had been living in a rented apartment, but we wanted a place of our own. I was really excited about this new chapter in our lives. One evening after work, Brian and I sat down to talk about our finances and how we would manage the costs for our new home. Kelly, we need to figure out how we're going to split the costs, Brian said, leaning back on the couch. Yeah, I've been thinking about that too, I replied. I can handle the furniture, appliances, and some art pieces. What about you? Well, I was thinking I could buy you a new car. I know your old one is giving you trouble, Brian suggested. I was surprised and happy. Really? That would be amazing. My car is practically falling apart. Yeah, I've seen it struggle. It's time you had something reliable, he said with a smile. We started house hunting right away. After a few weeks of looking, we found a beautiful house that we both loved. It was a bit expensive, but we decided it was worth it. Moving in was a busy process, but I was excited about decorating our new home. I spent a lot of time picking out furniture and appliances, making sure everything was nice and stylish. One Sunday, Brian surprised me with a new car. It was a sleek, shiny sedan, and I was thrilled. Brian, this is incredible. Thank you so much. I hugged him tightly and exclaimed, Thank you so much, Brian. This means a lot to me. You're welcome, Kelly. You deserve it, he said, looking proud of himself. As we settled into our new home, things seemed to be going well. We both enjoyed our jobs and loved coming home to our cozy house. But small things started to bother me. 
Brian's laid-back attitude, which I once found charming, was beginning to annoy me, especially when it came to household chores. Brian, can you help me with the dishes tonight? I asked one evening after dinner. Ah, Em, I had a long day at work, can't we just leave them for tomorrow? He replied, looking at me with pleading eyes. Brian, we can't keep putting things off. I'm tired too, but we need to keep this place clean, I insisted. Fine, I'll do it, he said with a heavy sigh as he got up from the couch. A few months into our marriage, I started worrying because I couldn't get pregnant. It was really stressing me out. I went to the doctor, and he told me to be patient, that it would happen when the time was right. Still, it was hard not to worry about it. Meanwhile, Brian's sister, Lauren, with her five kids, was visiting a lot. Lauren lived in a neighboring state, but you'd think she lived next door with how often she was around. Every time she came over, she'd unload all her problems with her husband on me. It was nonstop. During dinner, while we were trying to relax, she'd be at it, talking about her issues. Kelly, you won't believe what Richard did this time, Lauren would start, rolling her eyes. Lauren, can we talk about something else for once? I'd ask, trying to steer the conversation away from her marital drama. Oh, come on, Kelly, I need to vent. You're the only one who understands, she'd reply, not getting the hint at all. And her kids were a nightmare. As soon as they stepped into our house, it was like a circus. They'd run around, fighting with each other, throwing food, and just being loud. After a long week at work, all I wanted was some peace and quiet, but that was impossible with those kids around. Guys, can you calm down please? I'd say, trying to keep my cool as they tore through the living room. Why are you always so uptight, Kelly? Lauren would snap at me whenever I tried to get her kids to behave. They're making a mess, Lauren. I just cleaned the house, I'd respond, feeling my patience wearing thin. Well, maybe if you had your own kids, you'd understand. She shot back one day, her words hitting me like a punch in the gut. I was shocked by how insensitive she was, especially since she knew how hard I was trying to get pregnant. It felt like a slap in the face, and I couldn't believe Brian didn't say anything to defend me. Brian, are you going to let her talk to me like that? I asked, my voice trembling with anger and hurt. Kelly, calm down. You're making a big deal out of nothing, he said, taking her side again. A big deal out of nothing? She just insulted me in my own home. I shouted, feeling tears start to form. I was so fed up. I couldn't keep living like this, constantly being disrespected in my own home with my husband always siding with his sister. It was clear that something had to change, and soon. One Sunday, Lauren showed up with her five kids. She dumped them on me and said, Kelly, I need a break from parenting. I'm going shopping. I couldn't help but chuckle at her mention of parenting. The woman barely knew what that meant. Every time she was here, it was like a zoo. Fine, Lauren, but you better be quick. I said, already feeling stressed. Thanks, Kelly, you're a lifesaver, she chirped, grabbing her purse and bolting out the door before I could say anything else. Great, I thought, just what I needed. I was in the kitchen trying to cook dinner. It's a long process, and I like things done right. But with those kids running wild, it was impossible to focus. They were yelling, running around, and making a mess. Guys, can you keep it down? I shouted from the kitchen, hoping they'd listen for once. Of course they didn't. Suddenly, I heard a loud crash. My heart sank. I ran into the living room, and there it was my grandfather's antique Chinese vase shattered on the floor. My chest tightened with anger and frustration. What happened here? I screamed, looking at the kids who were now standing still, looking guilty. We were just playing. One of them mumbled, not meeting my eyes. This face is priceless. It's from my grandfather. Do you have any idea what you've done? I was livid, shaking with anger. Just then, Brian walked in, looking all calm and clueless. What's going on, Kelly? Your nephews just broke my grandfather's vase. Look at this mess. I pointed at the shattered pieces on the floor. Calm down, Kelly. 
It's just a vase, we can get it fixed, Brian said, shrugging like it was no big deal. Just a vase? This isn't about the vase, Brian. It's about respect. I'm tired of this. Every time Lauren comes over, our house turns into a mess, and you don't care, I shouted, my voice cracking with frustration. Just then, Lauren walked in with shopping bags, looking annoyed. What's all this yelling about? Your kids broke my grandfather's vase, Lauren. Look at this mess. I pointed at the floor, trying to hold back my tears. Well, maybe you should have kept a better eye on them, Kelly, she said, not even bothering to apologize. Are you kidding me? They're your kids, Lauren. I shouldn't have to watch them. I was furious, my hands shaking with anger. Brian just shook his head, looking annoyed. You're overreacting, Kelly. Just drop it. Overreacting. I've had enough of this. I'm tired of being treated like I don't matter in my own home. I screamed, the tears finally spilling over. Brian just stood there, silent and cold, while Lauren smirked like she had won something. I couldn't take it anymore. I stormed out of the room, feeling a mix of anger, hurt, and betrayal. We've been dealing with Lauren and her kids' chaotic visits for months, but I had no idea what was coming next. One morning, Brian was sitting at the kitchen table, munching on his toast, when he casually dropped a bombshell on me. Kelly, I need to tell you something. Lauren's getting divorced, and she's moving in with us with the kids for a few months, he said, like he was just telling me the weather. I almost dropped my coffee. What? Are you serious? Our house is already a madhouse when they visit for a day. How are we supposed to handle them living here for months? She's my sister, Kelly. She needs our help. You need to be more understanding, he said, looking at me like I was the one being unreasonable. Understanding? I've been more than understanding, Brian, but this is too much. Why can't we rent a place for her nearby? I'll even pay for the first month's rent, I suggested, trying to keep my cool. No, she'll be better off here. Plus, you can help with the kids and keep things clean, he said like it was the most obvious thing in the world. I'm not a babysitter, Brian. I work too, and I need to relax when I get home. I said, my frustration boiling over, stop being so selfish, Kelly. It's family, they need us, Brian said, his tone getting sharper. I'm not being selfish, Brian. I'm just asking for a fair solution. I don't want my life turned upside down, I said, feeling my anger rise. Well, they're coming tomorrow evening, so you better get used to the idea, he said, standing up and leaving the kitchen. I couldn't believe it. I felt completely blindsided and betrayed. The next morning, I woke up early, still fuming from our argument. I got dressed for work and went to grab my car keys, but they were nowhere to be found. When I called Brian, he answered, sounding way too calm for my liking. I took the car. It's mine, remember? I'm giving it to Lauren so she can use it for the kids, he said. I was stunned into silence for a moment. You're giving my car to Lauren? Are you serious right now? It's not your car, Kelly. I paid for it, and she needs it more than you do, he said, sounding matter-of-fact. That's the last straw, Brian. You've taken everything from me, and I'm done, I said, my voice shaking with anger. What are you talking about? Don't be dramatic, Kelly, he said, clearly not understanding. I stood there in the hallway, holding my phone, unable to believe what was happening. It felt like a nightmare I couldn't wake up from. How have things gotten so bad? I picked up the phone and called a moving company. Hi, I need a team to move some furniture and appliances today. It's urgent. The movers arrived a couple of hours later. I showed them around the house, pointing out the items to be moved. Take everything the beds, sofas, chandeliers, even the faucets in the bathroom. The movers got to work, and soon the house started to look empty. I felt a strange sense of relief watching them carry out each piece of furniture. As the last item was loaded onto the truck, I directed them to my mom's house. Everything goes there. Thanks for the quick work, guys, I said, handing them a tip. With the house now bare, I grabbed my essentials and headed to my mom's place. 
A few hours later, my phone started buzzing, it was Brian calling repeatedly. I ignored the calls, feeling a mixture of anxiety and empowerment. That evening, there was a loud knock on my mom's door. I opened the door to find Brian standing there, looking furious. What the hell, Kelly? What did you do? He shouted as he stormed into the living room. I took my stuff, Brian. You took the car, so I took what I bought, I said, keeping my voice calm. This is insane. You stripped the house bare. Where are Lauren and the kids supposed to sleep? He yelled, his face red with anger. That's your problem, Brian. You made this mess, now you deal with it, I replied, crossing my arms. You're a thief, Kelly. You stole everything, he shouted, waving his arms around. I didn't steal anything. Here are the receipts, I said, pulling out a folder and showing him the proof of purchase for all the furniture and appliances. He looked through the receipts, his anger turning to frustration. Fine, Kelly. If this is how you want to play it, I'll file for divorce. I took a deep breath and handed him a stack of papers. Already done. Here are the divorce papers. Sign them, and we're done. He stared at the papers, his face pale. You're really serious about this, aren't you? Dead serious, Brian. I deserve better than this, I said, feeling a strange sense of calm wash over me. He took a pen from his pocket, signed the papers without another word, and handed them back to me. Fine, Kelly, have it your way. I watched as he turned and walked out of my mom's house, the door slamming behind him. I stood there for a moment, feeling a mix of relief and sadness. It was over, and I knew it was the right decision. That night, I sat down with my mom and talked about everything that had happened. She was supportive and agreed that I had made the right choice. Kelly, you've been through a lot. It's time you focused on yourself and your happiness, she said, giving me a comforting hug. Thanks, mom. I just need some time to figure things out, I replied, feeling a weight lifted off my shoulders. Over the next few days, I started to settle into a new routine. I began organizing my new space at my mom's house and planning my next steps. It was a fresh start, and for the first time in a long time, I felt hopeful about the future. I felt hopeful about the future. I knew the road ahead wouldn't be easy, but I was ready to face it. I had taken back my life, and there was no turning back. After divorcing Brian, we sold our house and split the money. It was time to set up my own place. My mom's house was great for a while, but I needed my own space. One afternoon, I was sitting in the kitchen with my mom, looking at listings on my laptop. Mom, I think I found a place that looks perfect. It's a small apartment downtown, close to work, I said, showing her the pictures. She looked over my shoulder and smiled. That looks nice, Kelly. Have you called the realtor yet? Not yet, but I'm going to do that right now, I said feeling a bit excited. I dialed the number and waited for the realtor to pick up. After a few rings, a friendly voice answered. Hello, this is Larry. How can I help you? Hi, Larry. My name is Kelly. I'm interested in the apartment you have listed downtown. Is it still available? I asked, crossing my fingers. Yes, it's still available. Would you like to schedule a viewing? He replied, sounding hopeful. Absolutely. How about tomorrow afternoon? I suggested, trying to sound calm. That works for me. I'll see you at 4 p.m., Larry said before we ended the call. The next day, I headed downtown to meet Larry and check out the apartment. When I arrived, he was waiting outside the building with a friendly smile on his face. Hi Kelly, nice to meet you. Let me show you around, he said, shaking my hand. The apartment was small but cozy, just what I needed. It had a nice kitchen, a spacious living room, and a small balcony with a decent view of the city. This place is perfect, Larry. I'll take it, I said, feeling a sense of relief. After signing the lease and getting the keys, I started planning my move. I wanted to make this new space my own a fresh start. I spent the next few days packing up my things at my mom's house and arranging for movers to help me with the big stuff. On moving day, my mom and a couple of close friends came over to help. 
As we loaded the last box into the moving truck, I felt a mix of excitement and nervousness about this new chapter in my life. Kelly, this is going to be great for you. A fresh start is just what you need, my mom said, giving me a reassuring hug. Thanks, mom. I'm really looking forward to it, I replied, smiling. We drove to my new apartment, and with everyone's help, we had everything unloaded and set up in no time. As I looked around my new space, I felt a sense of accomplishment and excitement for what lay ahead. I looked around my new place and felt a sense of pride and peace. It was the start of a new chapter, and I was ready for it. That evening, I invited my mom and friends to stay for dinner to celebrate the move. We ordered pizza and sat on the floor, surrounded by boxes and laughter. Cheers to Kelly and her new place, my friend Julie said, raising her glass of soda. Thanks, guys. I really appreciate all your help and support, I said, feeling grateful. As the night went on, we talked and laughed, and for the first time in a long time, I felt truly happy and free. After the party, as I sat on my balcony looking out at the city lights, I thought about everything I had been through and how far I had come. I was proud of myself for taking control of my life and making the changes I needed. I heard from some mutual friends that Brian used his share of the money to buy a small apartment. Now he's living there with Lauren and her five kids. Brian's working two jobs to keep up with the bills while Lauren still isn't working. They're fighting all the time. One day, out of the blue, Brian called me. I was surprised to see his name pop up on my phone, but I decided to answer, curious about what he had to say. Hello, Brian. What's up? I answered, trying to keep my voice neutral. Kelly, please just hear me out, he started, sounding desperate. I know I messed up. I'm so sorry for everything. I didn't realize how hard it was for you with Lauren's kids. I couldn't help but laugh a little. Really, Brian? You're realizing this now, after all this time? Yeah, I know it's late, but I'm serious. I've been thinking a lot, and I miss you. I miss us. Can we start over? I'm ready to move into your apartment and make things right, he said, his voice almost pleading. I chuckled, shaking my head in disbelief. Brian, you've got to be kidding me. You think you can just waltz back into my life like nothing happened. Kelly, I'm serious. I'll do whatever it takes. I'll even take on more work to make it up to you, he said, sounding more desperate. Brian, I've moved on. I'm happy now. I'm not looking to go back to that mess, I replied firmly. Come on, Kelly. We can make it work this time. I've changed, he insisted. I sighed, feeling a mix of pity and frustration. Brian, it's over. You need to focus on your life and your family. I'm not interested in going back to that chaos, I said, trying to stay calm but firm. Kelly, please, I'm begging you. Brian said, his voice breaking with desperation. Brian, no, I found peace without you, and I'm not giving that up, I said, standing my ground. Take care, Brian. I hope you find your way. I hung up the phone, feeling a strange mix of relief and closure. It was clear that Brian was struggling, but I couldn't let his problems drag me back into a situation I had worked so hard to escape. Later that day, I met up with Julie for coffee and told her about the call. We sat in our favorite little cafe, the aroma of fresh coffee and baked goods filling the air. You won't believe who called me today, I said rolling my eyes as I stirred my coffee. Who? Julie asked, raising an eyebrow and leaning in with curiosity. Brian. He actually begged me to take him back and let him move into my apartment, I said, shaking my head in disbelief. Julie burst out laughing, nearly spilling her coffee. Are you serious? What did you say? I told him no, of course. I'm not going back to that mess, I replied, smiling at the absurdity of the situation. We spent the rest of the afternoon chatting and laughing, and I realized just how far I had come since my life with Brian. I had built a new life for myself, one that was peaceful and fulfilling. I wasn't going to let anyone take that away from me. The cafe was a cozy spot, with warm lighting and soft music playing in the background 
creating the perfect setting for our heart-to-heart -heart conversation. As the sun began to set, casting a golden glow over the city, we decided to take a walk along the river. The cool breeze was refreshing, and the sound of water flowing gently against the banks added a calming effect to our stroll. I can't believe how much has changed in just a few months, I said, looking out over the water, the lights from the buildings reflecting off the surface like tiny stars. You've come a long way, Kelly. I'm really proud of you, Julie said, giving me a supportive pat on the back. You're stronger than you think you know. Thanks, Julie. I feel like I've finally closed that chapter of my life. I said, a sense of relief washing over me as we continued to walk. I'm ready to move forward with confidence and joy. The next few days were busy but fulfilling. I started to settle into a new routine and began organizing my new space at my mom's house. It felt good to have my own place again, even if it was temporary. My mom's house was warm and welcoming, and she was incredibly supportive during this transition period. I spent a lot of time decorating my room, making it feel like my own little sanctuary. I put up some of my favorite artwork, arranged my books on the shelves, and set up a cozy reading nook by the window. It was a space where I could relax and feel at peace, away from the chaos and stress of the past. One evening, as I was unpacking the last of my boxes, my mom came into the room with two cups of tea. Thought you might need a break, she said, handing me a cup and sitting down on the edge of the bed. Thanks, mom. I appreciate it, I said, taking a sip of the warm tea. It was soothing, and the familiar taste brought a sense of comfort. You've been through a lot, Kelly. It's time you focused on yourself and your happiness, she said, giving me a comforting hug. You deserve it. I just need some time to figure things out, I replied, feeling a weight lifted off my shoulders as I looked around my new space. Over the next few days, I continued to adjust to my new life. I started planning my next steps, looking into new opportunities and setting goals for the future. It felt like a fresh start, and for the first time in a long time, I was genuinely excited about what lay ahead. One afternoon, I decided to go for a walk in the nearby park. The weather was perfect, with a gentle breeze and clear blue skies. As I walked along the tree-lined paths, I thought about all the changes I had made and how far I had come. I felt a deep sense of satisfaction and peace, knowing that I was on the right path. I bumped into some old friends while walking and ended up spending the afternoon catching up with them. It was great to reconnect and share my experiences, and they were happy to see that I was doing well. We talked about old times, laughed about silly memories, and made plans to meet up more often. It was comforting to know that I had a strong support system and people who cared about me. As the sun set, I headed back to my mom's house, feeling content and hopeful. I knew the road ahead wouldn't always be easy, but I was ready to face it with courage and determination. I had taken back control of my life, and I wasn't going to let anyone or anything disrupt my newfound peace and happiness.